Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, I am absolutely shaking today as I sit down to share with you what might be the most explosive development we've seen in the royal sphere since the abdication crisis. Pour yourself a strong cup of tea, because what I'm about to reveal about Meghan's latest public meltdown in Los Angeles, and more importantly, Princess Anne's shocking intervention, is going to leave you absolutely stunned. You know me, my faithful subscribers. I've been covering royal news for over a decade, and I pride myself on giving you the most thorough, unfiltered analysis of what's really happening with our beloved royal family. But I have to tell you, when this story first crossed my desk, I had to read it three times because I could hardly believe what I was seeing. And then when I learned about Princess Anne's involvement, well, I literally had to sit down with a gin and tonic. Let me take you through exactly what happened at this supposedly private event in Los Angeles, because the details that have emerged are simply staggering. Picture this scene, if you will. Here's the woman who claimed she couldn't handle the pressures of royal life, who told Oprah that the monarchy was too restrictive and toxic, completely losing her composure in front of Laz Elite, and we're not talking about a minor disagreement or a slight show of frustration. We're talking about what witnesses describe as a full-blown Hollywood-style meltdown, what makes this situation even more fascinating and frankly, embarrassing, is that this happened at what was supposed to be a prestigious charity event. Here we have someone who constantly preaches about humanitarian work and mental health, throwing what witnesses describe as an absolute wobbler because things weren't going exactly her way. And do you know what allegedly triggered this spectacular display of unprofessionalism? Apparently, she wasn't being treated with what she considered appropriate respect by the event organizers, can we just pause for a moment to appreciate the irony here? This is someone who walked away from the highest form of respect, being a senior working royal, because it was supposedly too constraining, and now she's throwing tantrums in law because she's not getting enough deference. The mind absolutely boggles, my dear friends, but here's where the story gets even more interesting. Our beloved Princess Anne, the Princess Royal herself, has finally had enough of this circus show coming from across the pond. Now you all know Princess Anne. She's the hardest working royal, conducting hundreds of engagements every year without any fuss or drama. She's the very definition of keep calm and carry on. So when she decides to step in and take action, you know things have gotten serious, according to my very reliable sources. And you know I never share anything unless I'm absolutely confident in my information. Princess Anne has been having some very serious conversations with William and Catherine about how to handle this increasingly embarrassing situation, and isn't it just perfect that it's Princess Anne taking the lead here? After all, who better to guide the future king and queen than someone who's dedicated her entire life to serving the monarchy with dignity and grace? Let's talk about the timing of this meltdown for a moment, because it's absolutely fascinating. This incident happened just days after Meghan was spotted desperately trying to network with Hollywood executives. Apparently, those Netflix deals aren't quite delivering the millions they expected, and the Spotify contract. Well, we all know how that turned out, don't we? It seems when you base your entire brand on attacking your family and playing the victim, eventually people get tired of the same old story. And speaking of stories, let's contrast this behavior with our beloved Catherine, the Princess of Wales. Have you ever, in all the years she's been in the public eye, seen Catherine lose her composure like this? Even when she was dealing with those horrible rumors that Meghan spread about her making someone cry, even when she was being attacked in the media by her own sister-in-law, Catherine maintained her dignity and grace. That's what real royal behavior looks like. My friends, that's the difference between someone who was born for this role and someone who saw it as a stepping stone to greater fame. And let's talk about poor Prince Harry for a moment. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Remember when he was our action man prince? When he served his country with distinction? When he created the Invictus Games? When he was beloved by the nation? Now he's reduced to standing in the background at Hollywood events, watching his wife create scene after scene. It's like watching a Shakespeare tragedy unfold in real time. The sources tell me Harry wasn't even present for this latest tantrum, and doesn't that just speak volumes? 
He's probably gotten so used to these displays that he doesn't even bother showing up anymore. From Prince of the United Kingdom to Hollywood House Husband, it's a fall from grace that would make even the most dramatic soap opera writers blush. But what's truly fascinating about this latest incident is how it's brought Princess Anne to the forefront of the family's response. Now there's a royal who understands duty. I'm told she's been having extensive conversations with William and Catherine about how to handle not just this specific situation, but the broader implications for the monarchy. And isn't that just perfect? The wisdom of experience combined with the fresh energy of our future king and queen. Let me share some exclusive details about what allegedly happened during this meltdown, because the more you hear, the more shocking it becomes. Apparently, Meghan wasn't just upset about her treatment at the event. She was furious because some of the other guests didn't recognize her. Can you imagine? This is someone who walked away from being one of the most recognizable royals in the world, and now she's throwing fits because Hollywood delights don't know who she is. Talk about a fall from grace. And let's discuss the impact this must be having on King Charles. Can you imagine trying to establish yourself as the new monarch while your daughter-in-law is throwing tantrums in law like a rejected reality tub star? Thank goodness he has the steady support of Princess Anne and the dignified example of William and Catherine to counter all this drama. The timing of Princess Anne's intervention is particularly telling. She's always been known as the no-nonsense royal, the one who just gets on with the job without any fuss. For her to become involved now suggests that even she's had enough of watching the monarchy. She served her entire life being used as a publicity tool by certain individuals. What really strikes me about this whole situation is how it perfectly illustrates the difference between real royal work and Hollywood activism. While someone's throwing tantrums in law because they're not being treated like royalty anymore, Catherine is out there working on her early years project making a real difference in people's lives. While certain individuals are creating drama for Netflix, Princess Anne is carrying out hundreds of engagements without any fuss or fanfare. And let's talk about the children for a moment. Can you imagine growing up with this kind of behavior as your example? I genuinely worry about Archie and Lilibet being raised in this atmosphere of constant drama and attention-seeking. Compare that to the Cambridge children particularly Princess Charlotte, who at such a young age already shows more poise and dignity than certain adults we could mention. Speaking of Princess Charlotte, isn't it wonderful how she's developing under Catherine's guidance? While certain people are throwing tantrums in law, this young princess is already showing all the signs of becoming a true asset to the monarchy. She's recently received her new title, and the contrast between her behavior and what we're seeing from Montecito couldn't be more striking. But here's what really gets me about this whole situation, the sheer hypocrisy of it all. Let me break this down for you, because it's absolutely mind-boggling. This is someone who claimed she needed to escape the royal family's toxicity for her mental health, only to create more drama and toxicity wherever she goes. Someone who preaches about kindness and compassion, yet reportedly reduces staff to tears. Someone who talks about privacy yet can't seem to stay out of the headlines. And let's discuss the American public's reaction to all this, because it's fascinating to watch the tide turning. Even in Hollywood, people are beginning to see through the act, the constant drama, the perpetual victimhood, the tantrums. It's not playing well anymore. Maybe that's what triggered this latest meltdown, the realization that the sympathy well might be running dry. And you know what's particularly telling about this whole situation the way different media outlets are covering it. Even the typically sympathetic American press is starting to raise eyebrows. When you've lost Hollywood, what do you have left? No wonder there are reports of panic in the Montecito mansion. Those Netflix millions aren't going to keep rolling in if people stop buying the victim narrative. Let me tell you about something else that's been happening behind the scenes, because this is absolutely fascinating, according to my sources. And remember, I never share anything unless I'm completely confident in my information. There have been emergency meetings at Kensington Palace about how to handle this situation. Princess Anne has apparently been instrumental in these discussions, bringing her decades of experience in handling royal crises to the table. And isn't it interesting how William and Catherine are handling all this? Their response, or should I say, their lack of response, is absolutely masterful. 
While certain people are creating headlines with public meltdowns, William and Catherine are quietly getting on with their duties, showing what real royal work looks like. No drama, no tantrums, just service to the nation. This latest incident has really highlighted the stark difference between those who understand royal duty and those who see it as a platform for celebrity. Just look at the numbers. While someone's throwing tantrums in law, Princess Anne has completed over 400 engagements in the past year alone. While certain people are desperately trying to stay relevant in Hollywood, Catherine is making real progress with her early years project. And let's talk about the impact this must be having on the monarchy as an institution. We're in a period of transition, with King Charles still establishing himself on the throne and certain people seem determined to make this transition as difficult as possible. But what they don't understand is that their attention-seeking behavior only serves to highlight the dignity and dedication of the working royals. Speaking of working royals, let's discuss the incredible work that Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, has been doing during all this drama. While certain people are creating headlines for all the wrong reasons, Sophie has been quietly and effectively carrying out her duties, proving that you don't need Hollywood glamour or Netflix deals to make a real difference in people's lives. And what about our beloved Queen Camilla? The grace she's shown throughout all this chaos is truly remarkable. Remember when certain people tried to paint her as the villain in their Netflix documentary? Well, who's looking like the villain now? While someone's throwing tantrums in law, Camilla is steadfastly supporting the king and representing the monarchy with dignity. Let me share some exclusive details about the atmosphere at recent royal events because it really puts this whole situation in perspective. At the last major royal gathering, the unity among the working royals was palpable. Princess Anne, William, Catherine, Sophie, they all presented a united front that sent a clear message. The monarchy is stronger than ever, despite the attempts of certain individuals to undermine it. The timing of this latest meltdown is particularly interesting when you consider what's happening in the Sussex camp. Their Netflix deals aren't producing the content everyone expected. Their Spotify contract ended in what can only be described as embarrassing circumstances. Their attempts to rebrand themselves as humanitarian leaders aren't quite landing the way they hoped. Is it any wonder we're seeing these public displays of frustration? And let's talk about Prince Harry's role in all this. My sources tell me he's becoming increasingly isolated in Montecito. Think about it. He's thousands of miles from his family, his old friends, everything he's ever known. His wife is throwing tantrums at public events. His media deals are falling apart. And his attempts to maintain some connection to his military roles are becoming more and more strained. The contrast with his brother couldn't be more stark. While Harry is essentially trapped in a Montecito bubble, William is preparing to be king, working closely with his father and raising his children to understand their royal duties, Catherine supports him every step of the way, showing what a true royal partnership looks like. No tantrums, no drama, just dedication to the crown and country. You know what really breaks my heart in all this. The way Diana's legacy is being tarnished. Princess Diana may have had her struggles with the monarchy, but she never stopped serving the people. She never used her position for personal gain. Even at her lowest points, she maintained her dignity and her commitment to helping others. What would she think if she could see what's happening now? Her beloved son, reduced to a supporting player in his wife's endless drama. And speaking of endless drama, let's discuss the pattern we've been seeing from Montecito. Every time their relevance starts to wane, something dramatic happens. First it was the Oprah interview, then the Netflix documentary, then Harry's book, and now these public tantrums. It's like watching a desperate reality Tev star trying to stay in the headlines. The impact on the monarchy's younger generation is particularly concerning. While Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis are being raised to understand their duties and responsibilities, what example is being set for Archie and Lilibet? Their mother is throwing tantrums in public, their father is increasingly isolated, and their connection to their royal heritage grows more tenuous by the day. Let's take a moment to appreciate how Princess Anne has handled similar challenges throughout her life. She's never sought the spotlight, never played the victim, never needed Netflix deals to validate her worth. She simply gets on with her duties, supports the monarchy, 
and maintains her dignity. That's what real royal behavior looks like. The differences in approach to public service are striking. While certain people claim they left the royal family to have more freedom to serve, what have they actually achieved? What tangible difference have they made? Compare that to Catherine's work on early years development, or William's environmental initiatives, or Princess Anne's decades of service to hundreds of charities, and let's not forget the wider impact on the institution of monarchy itself. Every time there's a public tantrum, every time there's a new attack on the family, it doesn't just affect the individuals involved, it impacts the entire institution. That's why Princess Anne's intervention is so significant, she understands what's at stake here, the support from the British public has been overwhelming. They see through the act, they understand who's really serving the monarchy and who's serving their own interests. The crowds that turn out for William and Catherine's engagements, the respect shown to Princess Anne, the affection for Sophie. It all shows that the people know who the real royals are. You know what's particularly telling. The way the younger generation of royals is stepping up. Lady Louise Windsor, for example, has shown more dignity and grace in her young life than certain others have managed in decades. She's following in her mother Sophie's footsteps, understanding that being royal is about service, not celebrity. The professional response from the palace to all this drama has been masterful. They've maintained their dignity, focused on their duties, and let certain people dig their own holes. It's exactly what Princess Anne has always advocated. Keep calm and carry on. Let your work speak for itself. And speaking of work, let's compare the engagements we've seen recently. While someone's creating scenes in law, our working royals have been visiting hospitals, supporting charities, representing Britain abroad. That's what real royal work looks like, not podcast deals and reality TV style documentaries. The future of the monarchy is secure, despite these attention-seeking antics from across the pond. In William and Catherine, we have a future king and queen to understand their roles perfectly. In Princess Anne, we have a guiding hand ensuring the transition to the next generation goes smoothly. And in the Cambridge children, we have the future of the monarchy looking brighter than ever. What a contrast with the chaos coming from Montecito. While certain people are desperately trying to maintain their relevance through public meltdowns and media deals, our true royals are quietly getting on with their duties, serving the nation, and maintaining the dignity of the institution they've sworn to protect. Let me tell you about something Princess Anne once said, and this really sums up the difference in approaches. She said that being royal isn't about being seen. It's about being useful, how perfectly that captures the divide between those who understand their duty and those who see it as a platform for celebrity. In closing, my dear royal watchers, let's remember what real royal behavior looks like. It's not about throwing tantrums when you don't get your way. It's not about Netflix deals and tell-all interviews. It's about service, dignity, and duty. Just look at Princess Anne, William, and Catherine, Sophie, and all our working royals, that's the example we should be following. Thank you for staying with me through this detailed analysis of the latest royal drama. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all the latest developments. Until next time, stay true to the real royals, and God save the king. Thank you.